الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله we'll continue with سورة غافر and we'll go through إن شاء الله تعالى verses number 7 and 8 and 9 three verses 7, 8 and 9 and again as a reminder uh, for those who want to memorize the verses uh, while we're going through the tafsir of it inshallah we'll take in three or four Four verses every day, so it's not difficult, inshallah ta'ala, to memorize it, and uh, it's very benefiting, inshallah, when you memorize verses in the Quran while understanding the meanings of it, and uh, to uh, have the proper understanding of the verses, and then once that is there, then to uh, have our own uh, reflection upon it with the fact that we know it, we understand it correctly. Uh, and the understanding or the reflection is, how can I achieve what has been mentioned in the verses of lessons to be learned, or whether it's a matters of belief, or deeds done by the heart, or physical actions, how can I achieve it? What might prevent me from uh, attaining it? What might prevent me from perfecting it? You know, so that the, the aql, the reason is used in this. After understanding the meaning very well, then how can we implement it? How can I perfect it? And that is also uh, with ilm, with knowledge, by following the way of the Prophet والسلام, and learning how to achieve these ayat in our lives. And this is basically the attitude or the, or the, the thing that we need to be upon when we're listening to the tafsir of the ayat. So that it changes our life and it purifies our hearts and keep us steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so the, we'll start inshallah ta'ala with the recitation of the ayat, uh, verse number seven. Alladina ahmiluna al-arsh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون للذين آمنوا ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلما ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلما فاغفر للذين تابوا فاغفر للذين تابوا واتبعوا سبيلك وقهم عذاب الجحيم ربنا وأدخلهم جنات عدن التي وعدتهم وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَقِهِمُ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَمَنْ تَقِ السَّيِّئَاتِ يَوْمَئِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمْتَهِ وذلك, الف... وَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ The transition of the ayat. Those angels who carry the throne and those around it exalt Allah with praise of their Lord and believe in Him 
and ask forgiveness for those who have believed, saying, O Lord, you have encompassed all things in mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who have repented and followed your way and protect them from the punishment of the hellfire, our Lord, and admit them to gardens of perpetual residence, which you have promised them and whoever was righteous among their forefathers, their spouses and their offspring. Indeed, it is you who is the exalted in might, the wise, and protect them from the evil consequences of their deeds. And he whom you protect from evil consequences that day, you will give you ha you will have given him mercy, and there is the great attainment. So, uh, from the beginning of the surah, as we heard, establishing the belief, the proper belief in the book of Allah, and some of the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala are mentioned, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one that forgives the sins, and He's the one that accepts the repentance, and He's severe in punishment, and there's no one worthy of worship except Allah, and that. Everyone shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the verses uh, start mentioning the disbelievers and how they dispute or argue with the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't be deceived by them. And as we heard uh, that this is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be deceived by the fact that they are well established on the face of earth or so. And then reminding the Prophet والسلام, and the believers of the nations before they did the same thing and they had all kinds of evil intentions and they argued with falsehood to uh, diminish or to oppose al-haq uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them uh, and this is the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth even if the punishment is delayed everybody shall return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this ayah alladhina yahmiluna al-'arsha wa man hawlahu yusabbihuna bihamdi rabbihim the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us about the angels, the, the closest angels. They are the carriers of Al-Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that they are in state of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they never stop. They glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most perfect way. And this is from Alamul Ghaib, this is from the Ghaib, from the unseen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, Al-Aziz Al-Alim. As mentioned in the beginning of the surah, he's the Almighty, he's the unknower subhanahu wa ta'ala. So believing in the angels, they are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from light. They are entrusted with jobs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them. And they are in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are making tasbih during the day and during the night. They never uh, get bored or they never stop in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here's a specific type of angels. These are the hamalat uh, al-arsh, those who carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's mentioned in other parts of the Quran. Uh, the number of these angels as eight, and it's clearly mentioned that it's in also in the day of judgment. Uh, but what's meant here is that, uh, as if, as some of the ulama they mentioned with the previous verses, how the disbelievers are and they choose to disbelieve. Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned the angels, those who are in constant worship of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa taala is in no need of the worship of the human beings, and these angel angels. As uh, one of the early generations of Islam, he said, ما نصح أحد للمؤمنين أفضل من الملائكة so that no one has more concern towards the believers better than the angels, as it's mentioned in the verse. And no one wants the worst for the human beings more than uh, Iblis. So we have Iblis, Shaitan, and his helpers, and we have the angels. And uh, the Quran explained to us, both are ghaib, both are unseen to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear uh, what's the objectives of the shayateen and what they do to the people. They only whispered to them. And what are the angels also with the different things that they do? One of which has mentioned in this verse, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers. So, الذين, not any angels, the, the angels, those who are in the highest level under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ and those who are around the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ 
يا ذير ميكينج تسبيح اند ذير ميكينج تحميد يسبحون بحمد ربهم and as mentioned before many times this is the perfect way of dhikr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful he taught this ummah to make the same dhikr like the angels do so there is nothing of a bigger or a better favor than to know how to make dhikr of Allah than to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not left to the human beings and the angels they say subhanallah alhamdulillah and subhanallah glorifies Allah which basically stating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no weakness, has no deficiencies, nothing of anything that less than he's the most perfect subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah states that he's the most perfect. And both together gives the perfect praise. When you deny any deficiency or any weakness, and when you state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most perfect. And uh, it fills what's between the heavens and the earth, and it fills the mizan, the balance of the good deeds, as the Prophet ﷺ said, by these simple words. And alhamd is to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for many things. For the fact that He is the Rabb of the Alameen, and they, as they say, Rabbana wa si'ata kulla shay'at rahmatan wa ilma. And this tasbih and this tahmeed is shown in their dua, as we would see, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the Alameen. So to be grateful to Allah, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the perfect praise that He is the Lord, the Creator, the Sustainer, and so on. The perfect praise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. Uh, the perfect praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His perfect names and attributes. Perfect praise beyond what we uh, can imagine. The perfect praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He sent uh, the messengers and revealed the books. And the perfect praise with regards to the Qadr of Allah. Everything is perfect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is all included when you say subhanallah alhamdulillah we choose the importance of it in very simple words but the more we understand the meanings of it the more we get the words by saying it and it's all about uh, having this established in the hearts so yusabbihuna bihamdi rabbihim wa yu'minuna bi and they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yastaghfiruna lilladhina amanu and they make istighfar for the believers they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the believers. The angels that are pure, they're not sin, sinful whatsoever. So their dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, that we see angels are making dua, then know for sure that this is accepted. Because what are the things that prevents a person from the dua to be accepted? Sins, uh, consuming haram, these types of things. The angels, they are... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected them when it comes to the acts of worship and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So their dua is accepted. And this is uh, making istighfar to who? To the believers. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers. وَاسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا They don't make istighfar to the disbelievers. Uh, they make istighfar, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for the believers. And this is the best help. There's nothing better than having the closest angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making istighfar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the believers وَاسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا Our Lord وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا Your mercy and your knowledge encompassed everything وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my mercy encompassed everything and the Prophet alayhi salatu was sent for the mercy to mankind وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ so the rahmah of Allah, inna rahmat Allah qaribun min al-muhsinin, near to the muhsinin. So the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompassed everything. So the real losers are those who are deprived from the mercy and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to attain it is to be among the believers. Uh, as the angels, they make an istighfar for them. So the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attained by the believers when they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're good doers. رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا And with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is again is repeated, so that the people humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَغْفِلْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا Forgive those who repented. And again, this is mentioned with the tawbah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qabil al tawb is the one that accepts the tawbah. And how that this is a definite and a necessary act of worship to the believers. Believers and tawbah, they can never depart them from one another. The believers are always repenting to Allah. And as we said, there is no excuse not to repent. There is nothing that can prevent the person from repenting to Allah. doesn't matter how many sins. 
doesn't matter if even he's not sure that he's going to be strong to avoid the sin. He has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. tabu. So this is the maghfirah is for those who repent to you, O Allah. وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ And they followed your path, the sabil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, this is my way, I invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Myself and those who followed me. So the sabil, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the path that the Prophet ﷺ took. This is the way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to be obedient to him. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ and Shield them, protect them from the punishment of Al-Jahim. And the dua is to be continued. Uh, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, uh, he said that uh, the meaning of وَيُؤْمِنُونَ bi, like the angels, they are having both the tasbih, which denies any deficiency to Allah, and the tahmeed, which states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most perfect. And we have to have this in our hearts when we're saying, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. وَيُؤْمِنُونَ bi, and they believe in him. He says, أي خاشعون له أذلاء بين يدي. Of course, the angels, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very obvious thing. But it, he says it means خاشعون لله. They are instead of خشوع, devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbled بين uh, يدي, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are uh, instead of submission and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, يستغفرون للذين أمنوا from the people of the earth. They seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers, those who believed in al-ghayb, those who believe in the unseen, because this is the first and the most important characteristics of the believers, they believe in the unseen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that qayyada faqayyada Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that made these closest angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they would make dua uh, for the believers بظهر الغيب while the believers they don't see that you can nobody can imagine but can you imagine angels are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a person's name you know for the believers so this is unseen to us right and this is the belief in the unseen and if the unseen is lifted everybody will be in state of al-iman so they make dua to the believers while the believers are not with them they're not listening they're not hearing them and uh, and this is from, since this, as he says, since this is one of the ways of the angels, they make dua for the believers while the believers do not see them. So this becomes the ways of the angels. The ways of the angels meaning when a believer makes dua to another believer, there's an angel who would say, Ameen, walaka bimithl. But with the condition that the believer is making dua for another believer, bidahar al You know the hadith. Of the Prophet والسلام, من دعا, uh, دعا المسلم لأخيه بظهر الغيب قال الملك آمين ولك بمثله If a Muslim makes dua for his brother بظهر الغيب When this brother is not hearing him He's not seeing him He's not knowing He's not going to call him afterwards He's not going to tell him I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you I will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He does not do any of this Because this will have Then it negates بظهر الغيب that means with unseen. He's not seeing him. He's not hearing him. He's not going to know about it whatsoever. Uh, this is the this important condition. If a person does it like this, that means it's a sign of sincerity. And since the angels, this is what they do all the time for the believers, then they, the, the angel would say, Ameen, there's an angel responsible for this. He would say, Ameen to your dua, and you have the like of what you made the dua for your brother. And this is treasure of uh, and gates of uh, a huge gate for goodness that a person can attain to have his dua accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the angel's dua is accepted. Uh, and as we mentioned this before, uh, you don't say to uh, someone, uh, you know, make dua to me with al ghayb. You know, it's uh, the believers, they, this is part of what they are. And the brotherhood for the sake of Allah necessitates that. Not that they wait for the mistake of their brother to uh, attack them or to boycott them or to never speak to them. They make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one another. If they slip, if they fall uh, or they led astray or something like this, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them, to make them steadfast, 
not just in worldly matters, but you know, matters of deen and for them to be steadfast and and this sincerity, this purity of the hearts of the believers, this is something that is essential in them. This is what the effect of Al Iman. And when you see like the Imma of this deen, Imam Ahmad would make dua for 50 or 60 people every day. He has, uh, this is like a word. This is like the word of the Quran, the portion of the Quran that he recites every day. There is a dua that he makes, that he makes dua for others. And that's why the more the person knows good people and righteous people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best who's righteous and who's not. But if they have the proper understanding of the deen, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for others. And this is one of the things that we learn from these verses so that we can we do it. And don't say, who am I to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for others? My dua is not going to be accepted. It's guaranteed that it's accepted that the angel would say, Ameen wa laka bimithli wa lakim bisharat with the condition that no one knows about it. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's enough that Allah knows. And the angel would say, Ameen. And you have the like of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the entire world by these types of things. So this is, has more effect than the physical things that people always attach to. This is how we're going to do to achieve this and to do that, mashallah. Take all the good means. But this is what's even more stronger than anything else. People belittle the dua. Where they think the dua, what is this? We need to take actions. Nobody has said not to take actions. But the dua is the most important mean that shows the truthfulness. And then the actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless it. And, and that's why those who say make dua and nothing else, they don't understand anything. They don't even know what dua means. So it's the dua and actions and being steadfast upon the deen of Allah. And uh, also, the uh, some said, but this is, you know, there's no actions built on, on this. Since the ayah says, وَأَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٌ On the day of judgment, there are eight. Some said there are four. And then in the day of judgment, there will be eight. Uh, also, the uh, you know, the, the, the angels, when they say, رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا That means your mercy encompasses everything. That means your mercy, O oh Allah, is spacious enough for their sins. That means no matter how much sins they do, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much bigger than that. That encompasses this. Right? So, uh, and your knowledge, rahmatan uh, wa and the knowledge of Allah encompasses all of the actions. Allah knows best the actions, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so much mercy, the mercy that nobody can comprehend that is sufficient and more to forgive all sins. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the unknower, and therefore His mercy encompasses everything. So, therefore, فَغْفِلِ الَّذِينَ tab. We learn even the perfect way of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after they praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they choose their sincerity. You know, you can say, you can make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your Muslim brother, uh, just at the end of your dua like this, as if you said something, Allah forgive so and so, Allah guide and make it easy for him. And that's it, one time. But you make dua for yourself so much, which is a normal thing, yes. But see how the angels, they, they're making dua with with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with perfect means of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then after that, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for those who repent to Allah and those who followed the, the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the sincerity. No one has that more sincerity to anyone, like the angels, to the believers. That means pardon them if they repent. And وَاتَّبَعُوا They followed what you have commanded them to do. This is the sabil of Allah. This is the path of Allah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from doing, we stay away. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And push them away from the punishment of the jahim or the punishment of the hellfires. Uh, and forgive me for mentioning, but this is, يعني, uh, we'll stop in the, in the normal time, inshallah. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, he said, وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا That the angels, they seek forgiveness for the believers. He says this is uh, one of the many benefits of Al-Iman. Great benefits of Al-Iman that the angels, the ones that has no dhunub, have no sins whatsoever, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the believers, those who have sins. So, فَالْمُؤْمِنُ بِإِيمَانِهِ تَسَبَّبَ لِهَذَا الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ the mu'min, the believer, by his iman, he is the mean to attain this great virtue. And the more the person increases his iman, the more he has a share 
of this dua from the angels and it's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this is, uh, you know, even, you know, the maghfirah, uh, as he says, ثُمَّ Since the forgiveness has some things that has to be attained, you know, asking, uh, just to ask for the forgiveness of the sins, it is not complete and sufficient. To ask for forgiveness of the sins, uh, with what brings the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they said, رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمٍ So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his knowledge encompasses everything. So forgive them for those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. So then the next ayah says, رَبَّنَا Continuing the dua. رَبَّنَا وَأَدْخِلُهُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْلٍ أَلَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ Allah make them admitted to Jannat Ad, the gardens of Ad. التي وعدتهم the ones that you promised them ومن صلح من آبائهم وأزواجهم وذريتهم and also those who are righteous among their fathers and their wives and their offsprings indeed إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم indeed you are the Almighty the most wise so uh, they making dua to Allah سبحانه وتعالى with the ruby of Allah ربنا our Lord the owner of all things وأدخلهم and also make them entered and make them admitted into Jannati Adna. Whoever enters the Jannah, he would never leave it. So it is enough just to enter. Right? Not that make them in Jannah forever. It's a very, it's a done thing. Once they enter, and that's why when uh, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah was asked about when does the believer, Mata Yashur al Mu'min, or Mata Yajid al Mu'min al Raha, when the Mu'min will be rested and done with the work and the struggling and so on. He said, عند وضع أول قدم له في الجنة is when he put his first foot in Jannah. Before that, إنك كادح إلى ربك كادحا You're working and all kinds of things. So the first step in Jannah, that's it. Once he entered Jannah, he would never leave Jannah. So ربنا وأدخلهم جنات عدن The Jannat of عدن عدن is the meaning of that they would stay in it. They would never leave it whatsoever. And not just them, but also they're those who are righteous, woman salah. This is a condition where from their fathers and, 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 and above, and their wives, spouses, and their offsprings. Uh, Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he said, In al Mu'min, the believer, if the believer entered Jannah, he would ask, about his father, about his son, about his brother, and where are they? فيقال, uh, they did not reach your level in actions. They are in Jannah, but they are in a lower level in Jannah. And we'll talk about this inshallah tonight. He said, indeed, I did that, or I did the actions for myself and for them. فَيُلْحَقُونَ بِهِ فِي الدَّرَجَةِ So they will be joined with him in the same level, the higher level. So those who are of a lower level, from the relatives the, and uh, fathers, and as mentioned in the, in the verse, they will join those of a higher level. And there's no one in a lower level in Jannah in the sense, no one feels that he's less. But those who are above, they know that they're above. But those who are less, they would never uh, think or, or feel or know that they are less than anyone because there's no ill feelings in Jannah. So they will join those who are of a higher level with them. And this is the, you know, a, a son can be of a higher level of Al-Iman than the father or vice versa or so. So this is a competition. And at the end, all of them, they will join one another. And this is the barakah of the, the closest people, especially with relatives, that they would benefit one another in the day of judgment if they all enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, if they die in the state of Islam, also they can intercede for one another. But if one is a disbeliever and one is a believer, the relationship is severed, is not there uh, forever. Uh, they, they have nothing to do with one another once they die. And the believers won't have any sadness or regret or anything because this is forbidden for them. But for the disbelievers, it's even more and more in punishment. And that's why, again, when we heard the wasiya al of the alim, the imam, when he was advising his son, he's advising him to be upon al-iman and faith so that our relationship continues forever. Otherwise, if one is a disbeliever and the other is a believer, 
they don't know each other anymore after they depart from this life. Or if they both disbelievers or Adu Billah, they will curse one another. So the only way that if, if people truly love their families and love their children and love their wives and whatever there is, is to make sure that they're upon Al-Iman and Islam and the Taqwa and the fear of Allah. Otherwise, what's the purpose of uh, loving each other and caring for each other for tens of years and then after that cursing one another? What's the benefit? There's no benefit unless they all enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is also happens to the believers. But there's another uh, and this is Mutarif ibn Abdullah ibn Shakhir is the one is the one that said, Ansahu ibadillah lil mu'minin malaik. The most uh, of the slaves of Allah, the creation of Allah that have nasiha and concern to the believers are the angels. But there's a, a very also delicate meaning here that some of the Ahmad mentioned in the tafsir. Why the fathers and the wives and so on? It shows that these relationships, and we'll repeat that inshallah ta'ala also tonight with the family subject. Uh, when you reflect upon this, uh, they are a source of comfort of oneself in this life. And therefore, this is also a source of comfort in the hereafter. That's why one of the, the, the misery things or the sad things in this life is when a closest relative to oneself is not, is causing trouble or is, is not a source of comfort to oneself. This is part of the trials that we go through in this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran that this is part of perfecting the delight and the happiness of the people of Jannah when they see the closest ones to, the, to them with them and they join them in Jannah, which also has a meaning to be reflected upon in this life. And uh, and this is what the angel said. See the angels, how they concern to the believers and the dua that maybe a believer would not even think of such a dua. That they're making this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to make them enter Jannah and to forgive their sins and so on and to make those who are relatives to them to enter with them and to join them in Jannah. Uh, and to shield them from the as-sayyat, which is the plural of sayyah. Uh, and whoever you shield, you protect him from the sins and the effect of the sins in the day of judgment, indeed you have rahimta, you had bestowed his, your mercy upon him. And this is the, the great attainment and the great win is when someone is saved from his sayyat. وَقِيهِمُ السَّيِّئَاتِ قِيهِمُ السَّيِّئَاتِ Either قِيهِم protect them from committing sayyat or sins or uh, shield them and protect them from the outcome or the consequences of the sins in the Day of Judgment. It has both meanings, not just the consequences of the sins. So وَقِيهِمُ السَّيِّئَاتِ O Allah, protect them from falling into sins. And if they fall into the sins, protect them from the punishment of the sin. And whoever you shield uh, them from the punishment of the sins in the day of Al-Qiyamah, فَقَدْ رَحِمْتَ You had bestowed your mercy upon him. Uh, and why is it called Sayyat? Sayyat means what? It uh, comes from a su. A su is, is, is what? Uh, something that harms you, something that is defames a person, something that is physical or non-physical. And this is how sins are. Uh, meaning the day of al uh, that means your mercy continued for, for the person uh, and, the, and the mercy in this life from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when the person is always repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he mentioned in this dua of the angels uh, he says it shows this is it requires for us to read this dua over and over again and see how beautiful it is and how perfect it is, but it shows how they, their perfect knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the angels, of course, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one is the like of them. So their perfect knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they worship Allah and how they mention the names of Allah and they make tawassul, seeking closeness to Allah and for the, deep, for the dua to be accepted by his names and attributes and by humbling themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the proper dua and the way to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, as he says, when their dua was to attain the mercy of Allah and uh, to remove any of what might be in the human uh, nafs or the human being that is already deficiency and weakness and so on because of the sins. So uh, they sought help from the mercy of Allah. The sins is the, is the worst thing ever with all the levels of sins. The worst of it is kufr and shirk and so on. Also the, the other sins, this is the real impurity and evil on the face of earth. 
and it, the, the, the bad consequences of it, one of which is that it, it prevents the person from attaining the mercy of Allah. So that's why you see in the dua, the sins and the mercy. They're, they're seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy to forgive and to pardon and so on, because this is the sins, a sayyat and a su, or the harm that happens to the person as a result of the sin, is that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would not attain it or not attain uh, the perfect mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that because of one's actions. So this is how they they made the dua in such a way so that the person is perfected by having and attaining the mercy of Allah. Also the, the perfect adab and manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they acknowledge the rububiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, in, in all what it means. And also they they love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. So when they uh, when they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers to be steadfast, not asking for the believers to have lots of wealth and lots of health and all of these things, they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the believers what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from them. And, the, and it shows the most important thing of the uh, seeking the forgiveness, seeking forgiveness. But uh, one thing that before we uh, end up in this, when I mentioned in the beginning about pondering, reflecting of the ayat, uh, he mentioned this as this is like when we're looking at the dua and to reflect upon what's mentioned in the dua. Uh, before we uh, say it one last time, he says that uh, to reflect upon this, you need to first to know ma'na love, to mean to know the understanding of what every word means, and uh, to know it when it's all together in that context, to to have the proper understanding of it, and then to look with your aql, with your reason to that matter. And how can I attain this? How can I attain what is mentioned? And what uh, are the things that would not perfect it for me? And what are the things that might deprive me from it? What are, what are the obstacles to, to, uh, to prevent me from uh, being among those who are mentioned in this dua? And to know for sure with definite belief that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, meaning the means to achieve this. Because uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants is that Anything that is an, a command from Allah, anything that leads to it, is also what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. But the means to achieve it is also deen. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to establish the salah, so anything that helps us to establish the salah, this is part of the deen of Allah. As long as it's not sin, for example. So also it's deen and it's also ilm. The same thing also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of all things. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed this Quran in the most perfect and eloquent way. For, and he gave us the tools so that we take the meanings and we don't just take the meanings and that's it. We need to work on ourselves of how to attain it. So when we briefly look at this, first of all, exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with understanding and believing in the angels, this mighty creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how they worship Allah and we need to imitate them in their devotion and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tasbih and the tahmeed and so on. Uh, the belief in Allah, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe like the belief of the angels and humbleness and devotion and submission. Uh, and with the, the thing that they mention about al-istighfar, this is the most important thing. And al-istighfar, as mentioned in the beginning of the surah, would never be attained except for the believers. So you have to believe and then the istighfar and seeking forgiveness will benefit. And to believe, that means to do also the actions and the acts of the believers. Al-Iman Yazid one goes, increases and decreases, increases with good deeds and decreases with bad deeds. So they see, they saw the, th the first thing, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers. And then the means to the forgiveness is to uh, be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, bestow his mercy upon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our sins and how to attain this, how to be among the muhsineen in the rahmat Allah qareeb. And then you think, how can I attain the mercy of Allah? What are the things that brings the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among the good doers, to purify our hearts, to uh, follow the way of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And uh, again, faghfil alladheena tabu, how to repent. And this is a, a, a major issue. You know, shaitan, he always has his way to prevent people from repenting. If you are the worst person on the face of earth, you still can repent and you, it's mandatory upon you to repent and don't think of tomorrow and next day and, and the ahkam is to be learned and to follow the commands of Allah, to follow the way the Prophet ﷺ. How, how can sabilak? How can I do it in my specific case and, your, and so on? And to be shielded from the punishment of the hellfire. 
and also the issue with the relatives and uh, and to be protected from the outcome of the sin. So this is these are great verses, and every verse is a great verse, and how it goes all together, and it uh, all means of steadfastness upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his benefit, inshallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, barakam, Muhammad wa sallam.